in added time at the end of this first half. Kane, Dembele, Eriksen. Goes for goal himself and brings the save from Jordan Pickford. Second fingertip save of the first half he's made. Of the matches in which they've scored first, Sunderland are unbeaten this season. Trippier. Looking to get away from Danny Graham, and he's got a free kick. Danny Graham penalised for attempting to push his opponent. Lamella and Eriksson, the two players near the ball. All hands on deck here for Sunderland. Eriksson. Back now to Trippier. Oh, and that was a terrible waste of a free kick, which may come back to haunt them now, because it's Adam Johnson. On the break with Jermaine Defoe, who's onside! But can only find the side netting with the angle narrowing and Danny Rose closing in. And they're going to make a change, Sunderland, with Jan Kirchhoff slotting into the Sunderland defence for the rest of this game. And Harry Kane will test him early here and pushed behind by Pickford for bouncing a potentially awkward spot just in front of the goalkeeper. So Kirchhoff straight into the action, trying to keep tabs on Kane on the goal line as the ball comes in. It's O'Shea with the header away. As far as Rose, Pickford's there again. Danger still not cleared, though. Dembele for Tottenham. 2-1. Pickford at full stretch, couldn't quite reach it. Low and true, bottom corner, Tottenham 2, Sunderland 1. And Tottenham ahead for the first time this afternoon. Pickford with the initial save. Dembele dragging the ball into a slightly more central position before sticking it to the goalkeeper's left. Well, it was 2-1 here to Tottenham last season on the same weekend. And Dembele's goal now separates the two sides. Uh, Sunderland have won just one of the last seven Premier League trips to London. They're behind again here as Eriksson finds the net again. Christian Eriksson, second goal of the match. I think via a deflection for the second time today. But now Tottenham have a little bit of breathing room. Midway through the second half and Eriksson gets the deflection of Kirchhoff past Jordan Pickford into the top corner. And Tottenham 3-1 against Sunderland here, three quarters of the way through the game. Vertonghen looking for Deli Alley. Kirchhoff there to intercept, but he's lost possession here and Vertonghen collects. And Tottenham push forward once more. This is Harry Kane, three up alongside him here. Kane goes for goal. Pickford there once more for Sunderland. Kane had players up alongside him, but fancied having a crack. Well, Newcastle, another side in the bottom three, were 2 1 winners here before Christmas. Villa beaten 3 1 here, though, earlier in the season. And Sunderland suffering the same fate at the moment. Good play here by Spurs. And Rose, was he fouled by Kirchhoff? Yes, he was. And Kirchhoff, having deflected the Ericsson shot, the Tottenham's third goal has now conceded a penalty. Well, he certainly made his mark on his first appearance for his new club, but perhaps not quite in the way that he might have wished. And Harry Kane with a chance to score his 12th Premier League goal of the season, which he hasn't missed. Tottenham 4, Sunderland 1. And Harry Kane on target yet again. 32 goals in his last 50 Premier League matches. Well, Sunderland taking the lead five minutes before half-time seems like a long time ago now. A good response from your team after a very frustrating day on Wednesday night. Yes, I've seen that uh, good response and happy. I think the fair result and uh, very pleased for the performance. Another good pe good performance, and, uh, but a different result. To give the opposition the goal 40 seconds after we scored was a, you know, was obviously from our point of view a, you know, really sloppy, sloppy, sloppy thing to do. 
I think we ran out of legs in the end. I think that when when the game uh, moved into the last quarter, that we were tiring and uh, you could physically see that. So you try and do something about it by changing the shape, putting the substitutes on. That that didn't work either today. So we end up losing 4-1 and I think it looked a bit more comfortable for Tottenham than it really was. I think that's probably fair um, because it did take Spurs quite a while to break down Sunderland's rearguard action, didn't it? It did. You know, for the first 45 minutes of the game, you know, Sunderland had a game plan. They stuck to it and they really frustrated Spurs. They made life difficult yeah. for them. They they had a lot of bodies in numbers in in central areas of the pitch and got a couple of clips here of Spurs trying to go through those central areas, but they just couldn't get through. But Sunderland's issue was when they did win the ball back. Every time they went long, this is all they, all they could do with it. They'd go long to a Jermaine Lenz or a Jermaine Defoe and the pressure just kept coming back on, on, onto Sunderland's back four. We've, we've highlighted the whole team that Spurs have got to try and get through here, apart from Jermaine Defoe. I mean, it's tough when you're playing in games like this. You've got to be really patient. Yeah. And um, it, it, for Spurs, they wasn't getting it right in that first half. Look, at this is Sunderland's back four. Look how narrow they are there. You've got Danny Graham, who's a striker at left-back, and Adam Johnson, who's their most creative player at right-back. So you've got six players playing at the back. It, it can be tough, and you, like I mentioned, you just have to be very patient. Uh, but from Sunderland's perspective, again, OK, you've defended great, but when that ball goes up top, what's Jermaine Defoe supposed to do with that? Flick it onto himself. Exactly. Well, this is the turning point in the game uh, for Tottenham and for Sunderland as well, really. And There's a decent save from the keeper, but when this comes out for Moussa Dembele, Jones has to show him to the byline. He's got to get him away from goal. He's got the, the cover of Van Arnholt. He cannot let him come inside onto his favoured left foot and do that. I mean, that's criminal. And then towards the end of the game, I mean, Big Sam mentioned that he felt that his team's legs had gone. When you look at Christian Eriksen, when he picks his ball up here, I mean, it, it pretty much highlights that situation. He's got all the time in the world, and I'm not sure what Kirkhoff was, was thinking there. We had a bit of a run on him, but as it was his debut, I thought we'd let him off. <laughs> let him off lightly. <laughs> we'd let him off lightly yeah, today, but look, it was, a, it, you know, it was a win for Spurs in yeah. the end. It wasn't a vintage performance, but they got, got the job done. Uh, interesting looking at Spurs. Rather like yourself, David, at um, Everton, of course, bringing through young, talented English players. and mm -hmm. that's, that's to be encouraged, isn't it? Well, I think Tottenham have done very well and you have to give the manager a lot of credit for yeah. playing them because the only way the young boys are going to get through is by playing. Deli Ali, Harry Kane, Eric Dyer, mm. you know, have really been great for Tottenham. And even earlier when we looked at John Stones and Ross Barkley, yeah. I mean, it's great for England just now that they've got an emergent talent mm. who are coming through, who are playing games and uh, it'll give them great Would confidence. Would like more managers years. perhaps give them the, the, the young players the opportunity or is it different at different clubs? Well, I think for all the money that we've spent in the Premier League this year, the people we're talking about are the boys we've yeah. mentioned there. And I do think that, you know, you, like Chelsea have got a lot of very good young players as well, you know, who could maybe be given the opportunity to they play as well. They don't get it though, do they? Really? It's very hard, but that's where the managers need to be, give the boys opportunity. And like Tottenham have done so, Everton have done so. Mm. And uh, they've blossomed, the boys. OK. Uh, with Arsenal playing on Sunday, Leicester had the chance to go top against an Aston Villa side whose victory over Crystal Palace in midweek was their first since the opening day of the season. Jonathan Pearce was at Villa Park. After Charlie and Lescott gave them their first win since the opening day on Tuesday against Palace, unchanged Aston Villa want to cut and paste Leicester's great escape plans of last season. Leicester themselves are unchanged as well, with Villa reject Mark Albrighton a key note in their foxtrot. He's played 29 league games in a row, during which they've earned 62 points. All Brighton went for the little flick. Here's Varda, the goalkeeper's come a long, long way and he's in trouble. That's a yellow card for that. Didn't need to come out that far, Mark Bunn. Error of judgment at the back by the Villa centre-back and then by the goalkeeper. And it looks for drink water. Oof. Oh, that's a mistake, and he's letting Kosak here into the penalty. Here. Can he finish? Schmeichel, big hand, parries it away. Needs support, back it comes. Morgan got in there. Major opportunity for Aston Villa, but he never really looked convincing, Libor Kosak. Fine goalkeeping nonetheless. New chairman at Aston Villa this week, local businessman Steve Hollis, and he's working with the CEO, Tom Fox, and it's Leicester on the attack, Barney! Oh, is that kept out, Okazaki? 